In order to preserve some of my most anticipated projects, I decided why not knock out a video that should have been produced six months ago. Ever since his retirement announcement, I've wanted to make a video on Casey Kane. The question I asked myself, however, was what could I talk about? Now while he's underachieved on the racetrack, I don't consider Casey Kane a misfortunate legacy. Some of the instances of mediocrity were more on the team, and there isn't a compelling failure I can pin onto the Washington driver. So instead, we are going to go over the downfall and the decline in performance of Casey Kane, as after all, he was considered one of NASCAR's most promising stars right alongside Kyle Busch and Carl Edwards during the mid-2000s. There's a lot of material to go over, so it's time for today's featured presentation. So anyways, Casey Kane's rise to fame started on dirt as he drove in the USAC and the World of Outlaws at the start of the 21st century. His major accomplishment was the 2000 USAC National Midget Championship as Casey Kane was able to win six races driving for Steve Lewis Racing. His first NASCAR stint took place driving for Robert Yates Racing, piloting the number 98 Channel Lock Ford in 20 Grand National Series events. During those races, his statistics were fairly mediocre as he only earned one top 10 finish at the Michigan race and had an average finish of 22.9. Not very good, but it's still fairly early in his career. We'll have to see what a full campaign can do to bolster his career. Luckily, he got that prime chance in 2003 with Aikens Motorsports driving the number 38 Great Clips Ford. While he didn't cut through the competition, Casey Kane was able to consistently put together results, earning 4 top 5s, 14 top 10 finishes, and he had an average finish of 15.1. In addition, during the Grand National season finale at Homestead, Miami, Casey Kane was able to win his first career NASCAR sanctioned race, leading 29 laps to finish ahead of future NASCAR champion Martin Truex Jr. So after that victory, Casey Kane was ready to go to the NASCAR Cup Series as he signed with Evernham Motorsports to replace Bill Elliott in the team's number 9 car. The move ignited some legal issues as Kane broke a contract with Ford by moving to an Evernham Dodge. Luckily, the two sides agreed to settle and Casey Kane was ready for the big leagues. While some of the naysayers debated whether he was rushed up too quickly, Casey Kane, once he hit the Cup Series payment, he proved them all wrong and nearly took the circuit by storm at Rockingham as he finished second to defending champion Matt Kenseth. While he didn't earn a win during that campaign, he earned an impressive 13 top fives, including five runner-up finishes. It was certainly one of the better rookie performances in recent memory as you look at drivers today such as Eric Jones, Daniel Suarez, William Byron, and Bubba Wallace. They weren't even close to visiting victory lane. Meanwhile, Casey Kane netted 13 top fives. And ultimately, Casey Kane claimed the 2004 rookie title after finishing 13th in the final standings, beating out NASCAR champions Brian Vickers and Brendan Gaughan to claim the honor. Things were looking promising for Ray Evernham's young star, and he should pick up right where he left off in 2005. Unfortunately, the sophomore slump hit Casey Kane and the nine team horribly in 2005 as the Red Dodge only netted five top fives, eight top ten finishes, and a whopping nine DNFs due to crashes and mechanical issues. If there was one positive, the red number 9 Dodge finally broke through at Richmond as Casey Kane earned his first career NASCAR Cup Series victory. In late 2005, Ray Evernham decided to swap the race teams of Casey Kane and Jeremy Mayfield as Casey Kane got the successful number 19 team and Jeremy Mayfield got the number 9 team that struggled horribly. Ironically, the 2006 campaign was a breakout season behind the wheel for Casey Kane as he kicked off the season by netting his second career win early in the season at Atlanta. From that point, the 9 team went on to win the Texas race three weeks later and swept the Lowe's Motor Speedway that season leading 292 laps combined in those events. 
In addition, he performed well at the fast two-mile speedways, and he won the spring race at Michigan and earned a win under the lights at the Auto Club Speedway. His impressive season earned him a spot in the 2006 chase as he wrapped up the season 8th in points. And if you take the inconsistencies of the first three chase races out of the equation, I think Casey Kane would have competed for the championship and he would have been in the mix with Jimmy Johnson under the lights at Homestead. Overall, this was a season that gave Casey Kane his star power. He was able to back up the hype with success on the racetrack. And as long as Ray Evernham's team continues to develop and build towards the future, he will surely get his fair share at the NASCAR Cup Series trophy sooner than later. That is, until the organization was plagued by mediocrity, controversies galore, and a struggling economy which caused Ray Evernham to merge his operation with Richard Petty by 2009. During that time frame, Casey Kane's performance wasn't bad, but the nine team was a middling race team struck in neutral, only earning two wins and one chase berth from 2007 to 2009. Things did not get any better for Casey Kane and Kenny Francis, as the switch to Ford did not help the nine team become number one. In 31 races with RPM during the 2010 campaign, Casey only finished top 10 nine times and was ranked 21st after the Bank of America 500. Knowing this organization was a handshake away from death, Casey Kane announced early in the season his departure from the nine team and pursued a fresh start elsewhere in the NASCAR garage. As a result, on April 13, 2010, Casey Kane signed the biggest contract of his NASCAR career as starting in 2012, he would drive the number five Farmers Insurance Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports and join champions Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, and the sport's most popular driver Dale Earnhardt Jr. at Rick Hendrick's four-car operation. Finally, Casey Kane would have a solid team to build around and develop on the racetrack and he can start winning races and competing for titles for years to come. In fact, Rick Hendrick even called him a future champion in the sport of NASCAR. The hype was up to oblivion and let's see if he can finally break through as a top tier driver. Coming off a consistent campaign with Red Bull Racing, Casey Kane's debut season with HMS was solid to say the least. While the five team led by Kenny Francis experienced growing pains to start the season, Casey Kane along with Hendrick Motorsports as an organization went on a tear during the summer. Casey was able to claim victory at the Charlotte 600 and again at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway. As during the 2012 chase for the cup, Casey Kane was absolutely rock solid earning 5 top 5s, 6 top 10 finishes and he placed a career high 4th place in the final standings. Unfortunately, the next two campaigns under Kenny Francis were fairly mediocre and the five team remained in neutral on the racetrack. While 2013 saw Casey Kane earn two wins, including a clutch win against teammate Jeff Gordon, the five team had a slew of inconsistencies during the playoffs and finished 12th out of the 13 chase contenders. The 2014 campaign was even more of a struggle as Casey Kane was in a must-win scenario just to make the 16-driver chase. Meanwhile, his other three teammates combined to win nine races and were title favorites for this new knockout format. Ultimately, Clutch Casey was able to fend off Matt Kenseth and avoided the embarrassment of being the only Henrik Motorsports team to miss the chase. While Casey Kane went on to advance to the round of 12, the 2014 campaign was a huge disappointment as the five team only netted three top fives all season long. Meanwhile, all three of his fellow teammates netted four wins each. Yeah, there's a lot of work that needs to be done this off season. So without a doubt, changes needed to be made to this five team to bolster the performance in the long run. Crew chief Kenny Francis was released from Hendrick, which meant the organization had two head crew chief vacancies entering the 2015 season. 
Dale Jr. was paired up with Greg Ives as he was promoted to the Cup Series after winning the 2014 Grand National Championship with Chase Elliott. Meanwhile, Casey Kane's new crew chief would be none other than Keith Rudd. And yeah, are you serious about this decision? I mean, his only accomplishment on top of the pit box was an all-star race victory in 2014. Besides that triumph, Keith Rodden and Jamie McMurray had largely mediocre statistics and couldn't improve on the performance from the season prior. In addition, let's go back to 2007 where Keith Rodden was interim crew chief for Casey Kane. His best finish during that time frame was a 19th place at Bristol with two finishes outside the top 30 in three races. Now while the move seems sketchy, who knows? After all, Chip Ganassi is an organization piggybacking off of Kyle Larson's talent alone. This is Hendrick Motorsports we're talking about, and the faster cars and equipment along with the fresh start with Keith Rodden could lead to victory lane for the historic five team. During the first 16 races of 2015, wow, my judgment was totally wrong as Keith Rodden and Casey Kane had a consistent campaign brewing forward. The five team netted two top fives, six top 10 finishes, and entered Daytona a solid eighth place in the point standings. Things are looking strong just 10 races before the chase. With that said, the five team proceeds to implode faster than Daytona's backstretch grandstands and goes through a brutal summer slump. Oh my goodness, where do I start with this implosion? From Daytona to Bristol, Casey Kane only netted one top 15, five finishes 20th or worse, and went from a comfortable position in the chase to 17th on the grid, the first driver below the cut line. This race team never recovers from the implosion and Casey Kane misses the chase for the first time since joining HMS. To make matters worse, he got beat out by two mediocre veterans who hadn't made a postseason prior to 2015 and Clint Boyer driving for a team plagued by Spingate and other financial ruins. Seriously? So yeah, the 2015 season brought nothing good for Casey Kane's career. Unfortunately, over the next two seasons, the five team got progressively worse and worse as for the second season in a row, Casey Kane missed the playoffs after coming short at Richmond. In addition, he failed to lead a lap all season long and considering that he is driving for a powerhouse team in Hendrick Motorsports, that is an embarrassing feat to accomplish. Now, despite his victorious win at Indianapolis and ending up making the playoffs, the entire 2017 season was a train wreck for the Farmers team. I remember back to the July New Hampshire race as an example, as Casey Kane had a fast car and finished a solid sixth place during stage one. Once they lost their track position, however, the five car was completely stuck in neutral and couldn't even advance from the 31st position. He goes a lap down in stage two and finishes outside the top 25. Nothing was mentioned of damage or mechanical troubles and it appeared that the car was just plain garbage. Even during the playoffs, the team had performance issues as Casey Kane and Keith Rodden finished an abysmal 21st place at Chicagoland. As a result, Keith Rodden was finally relieved of head crew chiefing duties and veteran Darian Grubb took the reins. Unfortunately, the crew chief change was not a game changer and Casey Kane was eliminated from his final NASCAR playoffs in the round of 16. After it was announced that summer that Casey Kane was released from his contract, his tenure at Hendrick Motorsports was officially over. He got another gig with Levine Family Racing, but the results just weren't the same. His fourth place finish at Daytona in July was his only top 10 of the campaign, and he was on average a 26th place car most weekends. The 2018 Southern 500 was an interesting event for Casey Kane as he was sporting a classic throwback to his widely successful 2006 design. After finishing 24th after a demanding 500 miles, it was announced the next week that Casey was experiencing health issues inside the race car, more specifically dehydration during races. 
This came weeks after Casey Kane announced his retirement from NASCAR after 2018. And now while I don't want to say this is the exact reason why he retired, there's a good chance that this was some of the motivation behind his decision. While Casey Kane was hoping to return to the 95 and send off his career in style, he was unfortunately never cleared by doctors to race. So after 18 career wins, including three Charlotte 600 victories, Casey Kane's NASCAR career was over. So there you have it, the downfall of Casey Kane. Now, in the long run, I pinpointed a few issues that plagued the Enumclaw Washington driver during his career and prevented him from truly breaking out. Obviously, you have the state of Evernham Motorsports at the time as they were in a decline performance-wise just as Casey Kane was performing on the track. The combination of a mediocre crew chief with the declining five car at Hendrick Motorsports ultimately was not the best decision and currently William Byron and Chad Knauss are still rebuilding the race team to even consistent top 15 results. And finally, Casey Kane's health issues played a big role during his decline in NASCAR and why he chose to retire in 2018. In my opinion, had dehydration not played Casey Kane, he would have likely taken the Stuart Haas number 41 ride that was offered to him and he would still be competing at NASCAR's top level. It's unfortunate because Casey Kane was a well-respected driver on the racetrack and it's a shame he had to cut his NASCAR career short and bid his fans an uncharacteristic farewell. I remember one Christmas asking for a Casey Kane 124 winner circle die cast and a hauler and as a 5 year old I am unsure the reasoning behind asking Santa for these items. Whether it was bandwagoning off Kane or just simply asking for another toy to bang through a wall, what I do know is most certainly Casey Kane was a good NASCAR driver on the track and while he came up short of becoming a legend, he had some great moments to look back on and to build his legacy into the future. Hopefully Casey Kane can win races and have fun on dirt, and who knows, maybe I'll catch him in St. Louis for the Gateway Dirt Nationals one day. So anyways, this is NRF signing out, and just remember, life's a beach, and then you drive.